Hello, and welcome back to the Very Real Estate Effect podcast, a show dedicated to real estate investing in Quebec. I'm very eager to speak to Stephanie Kowalu today. Uh, so Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right. So you are a, a commercial broker. Um, you focus on real estate for a number of years, of course. And uh, you, you recently started a company called L'Effet Papillon Financement. And I was just wondering, like, how, how did that all come about? Yes. So I'm a commercial mortgage broker and uh, that came about um, with a dear need uh, to prov provide affordable housing. Uh, so I do specialize uh, in affordable housing products, um, aside from the many different things that we do in terms of multi-unit financing. Uh, but it really started with uh, the, the vibration I needed to, to explore in regards to um, my next step. I had come to a point where I just needed something more. I was very comfortable where I was and I needed to be um, not as stable, I think. And uh, that all came about gradually by speaking to wonderful people around me uh, and creating collaborations and, 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 and having everybody get excited about the project. Uh, and so as much as there was difficult discussions, uh, it just became more and more clear over the months as soon as I started discussing uh, Effet Papillon Financement uh, it just, it was very, very clear to me at some point uh, with everybody that I spoke to about it, uh, all the trusted contacts and uh, yeah, just the need to provide affordable housing in the market conditions where there's so much pressure on construction costs um, and, and, and a lack of availability uh, for housing, housing options. No, oh, definitely. And you're specializing in, in quite a niche because a lot of investors really are not focusing on affordable housing. And that's uh, that's quite a good space that you've created for yourself because obviously it has advantages and we'll get into a little bit of those details um, uh, later on. And so you've you've migrated really towards that um, that area of affordable housing. And, you know, obviously we're going to be talking a lot about the, the, the CMHC and CMHC process. Like, how, how does the CMHC intervene into that? And then we'll go and define the, um, the, the organization, its mandate and so on. Perfect. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So the CMHC was started a number of years ago. What exactly, who are they and what's their mandate? Yes, so it's, it's a very important thing to start with. Well, CMHC is there to help Canadians meet their housing needs. So that's why they're there, their mandate is to help Canadians access affordable housing options. Um, it is policy driven, it takes a longer process, uh, as opposed to conventional options that are more relationship driven, and maybe a little bit faster. So uh, I think this is how I can best uh, define CMHC. Okay. And also, and we'll, we'll get into it. And for a lot of people think like CMHC is actually like a bank, but it's not. They're, they're there to insure a mortgage in order to provide certain advantages. Um, and so actually maybe that would be a, a nice way to segue. Like what are some of their advantages? What does it take to qualify? Like, how does it all work? Cause a lot of people hear this buzzword, like, Oh, do a CMHC financing and so on and so forth. But what does it all mean? So very good point. So CMHC is not a bank. Uh, they have some very limited funds where they act as the bank, but it's mostly not available to just you and I. It's, it's available for different types of investor. Um, but CMHC to, um, I would say, the smaller scale real estate investor in multi-unit um, is acting as a protection. It protects the lender. That's basically what it does. And the borrower will benefit from a lower interest rate, a higher amortization period, and um, a loan to value that is usually higher. When I mean usually, um, it's 85%, we say loan to economic value or the lesser of the purchase price, economic value or market value. Um, but it's important to specify because they do have their own parameters. And so your 85% loan to economic value or purchase price or market value uh, can sometimes be closer to maybe um, 
80 to like 75 percent on the conventional side uh, of, of numbers. So they will adjust and we'll talk about it a little bit more in terms of when we dig uh, deeper into CMHC and the criteria. But very mainly good. that's what it is. Okay, well, that, 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 that helps define it. Thank you very much. And, and to clarify that right at the beginning, because we wouldn't want to go for quite a while without actually discussing and describing them uh, uh, properly. So obviously, we hear a lot on the market right now, we all know how hot it is, and the availability of credit, there's a lot of cheap money out there right now. There's a lot of money chasing projects. So banks are banks are eager, eager to to lend, uh, obviously, you know, following certain criteria. And there's a lot of investors who are looking to to do some projects and so to speak, uh, who are trying to squeeze the most juice out of their property. So I was hoping maybe we could kind of pick an example of someone who owns uh, a six unit. They've bought it um, two years ago with a conventional lender. So let's say a, a Desjardins or Banque Nationale or, or one of those institutions. And that, that owner has been able to um, raise revenue a little bit and now is looking to do a refinance. So even just refinance, like what does that mean? Yes, so it's 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 good because there's two things you can do. You can either renew. So when you renew, you just continue the existing mortgage. When you refinance, you take out money. So you usually get more money out. Um, and I think maybe the way to 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 go into the subject is is probably looking after what are the actual options in terms of refinance. So you can choose to go conventional and limit yourself with 25 years AMOR to usually uh, with a slightly higher interest rate, or you could go to CMHC and almost have a guaranteed 30 years amortization and uh, a rate that is going to be more or less 1% less than any other conventional options on the market. Uh, so right there, in terms of your cash flow, it's a significant impact on the cash flow. Um, when we compare the two, always, it's most of the time better to go to CMHC, especially in your particular case. But I will point out that especially when you're dealing with five and six units, you're in a bit of a gray zone okay. because there are residential options for you. So I'd like to also point out that there's conventional options on the commercial side, there's CMHC options, and there's purely residential options. So I think the way to go about it, if you're not sure and you're here trying to get information about real estate, um, is is what's your goal? And so is your goal to own one sixplex and your main source of income is your personal income, then there might be some very good residential options for you. Mm -hmm. However, if your goal is to grow and leverage and continue to expand and find these real estate opportunities, there are no better options than CMHC because of the low interest rate and the amortization. So understanding what you want. Do you want to grow? Do you want to expand? And CMHC, depending on the how well the renovations have been done, so you've changed all windows, all the kitchens, uh, even though your building is maybe a 1950s building, but you've done all the investment, well, they will go up to sometimes 35 years amortization. So big difference there yeah um and on new construction project they'll go as high as 40 years amort uh so it's it's there are no options conventionally that offers that mm -hmm. and so just for people who are listening and who, who might be wondering like why would you want to pay a loan over 40 or 30 years if you could pay it over 25 and correct me if i'm wrong but the the, the objective here is to actually lower the monthly payment because we pay it back over a longer period. So yes, we pay we pay more interest, but it really helps us with our monthly cash flow because our debt servicing is, is a lesser proportion of the total revenue. Yes, and, and it's a business, see it as a business that runs by itself and that tenants pay for the capital and interest and the interests are deductible. So it's really a standalone business. If your objective is... So each property should be a standalone business and allow you to re-leverage in order to buy more businesses or more buildings that service its own debt. And so um, it, it's really, and, and as it's policy driven, 
they have a lot of criteria, and mm -hmm. because they're backing the lender, there's there, there's really no room for uncertainty. So once your asset is is stabilized uh, and you're ready to move on to the next purchase, I I, I think it's 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 a wonderful option. Um, but again, you have to look at what your future holds, what you want, uh, and 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 what kind of investor are you? Yeah. And, and you, you properly said it is that each investor and individual re must really think about what his short term and long term objectives are, because this may not this CMHC refinancing may not apply to everyone, as, as you stated, like someone who just wants one sixplex and that's it. And their objective might be to pay it back as quickly as possible. So then, yeah, raise revenue, but don't refinance, just make extra payments. But for someone who's looking to grow and add more units to the portfolio, that's a wonderful source of funds to be able to fund the next purchase from an existing building. Yes, and, and you're touching a, an important point in regards to refinance uh, because there has been some um, updates in terms of what you can do with the refinancing of, uh, of a building. Um, and so CMHC will limit to capital repairs and improvements either on the subject property or any future uh, property. Uh, it will also limit it um, for any other purchase of a two or more units. Um, and it will also um, allow for the building of two or more units. Again, this all makes sense because CMHC's mission is to provide housing, not to make people buy Lamborghinis. So it's it's very important uh, to clarify that, especially when it comes to refinance, um, there is a clause that uh, limits uh, mm -hmm. what you can do. So again, if you're looking to expand and buy more and reinvest, uh, CMHC is a really good option. Okay. So then now, kind of going back to the example of let's say the, the the owner the landlord he's got a six unit it's been two years the when we say stabilized by the way i just want to make sure we have the same definition is that if there is any work or renovation that needed to be done uh, that might have caused vacancy now all the units have been let's say renovated and now they're all rented so the the building is generating the maximum amount of revenue it can do we correct Okay. It's so optimized. It's, it's optimized. optimized. So once, once that property has been optimized, now we can go into the uh, refinancing process. And I know it's going to be a, a long question, but what, what does it take? And we can break it down. Like, first of all, maybe like, is there a, a list of documents that's required? Yes. So when you look at the list of documents, it can greatly uh, change, but see it as three main categories. You have about the property where you'll provide your taxes, your insurance, whatever services such as hydro or oil you have to pay for the building. Um, and, and then you'll have any appraisal if it's needed. So CMHU will require uh, since January 20. 21 uh, buildings from five to 24 units, they require an appraisal report. So that's something to consider, especially in times like this, appraisers uh, don't come around that fast anymore. So uh, just to plan that ahead of time, um, as well as any description as to what the renovations have been done and uh, who, um, who is the current lender, who are we paying back and, and moving back to um, somebody who's invested in his property, say 200,000, um, my recommendation in this case is potentially to maybe get a line of credit because CMHC will not put money back in your pockets, but they will pay back a debt. Mm -hmm. So something to keep in mind when it comes to refinancing and if you're investing your own capital, I would maybe see or seek the advice of somebody to see how that's going to work out with the refinance eventually. Um, so about the property, probably the core of the um, of the documentation required. And then if you're dealing with a broker or a bank, they'll come up with their analysis. Um, all the leases, renewals, rent roll going to be very important as well. Um, they will require for anything seven units and more 
environmental reports. So that's another important thing yeah. on the CMHC side is required seven units and more. So if we're having the example of six, it's not required. Uh, but that being said, the environmental report can be provided once the CMHC certificate is issued. So there's no rush on that for the underwriting. So that kind of close off the property information uh, that needs to be provided. Uh, then we go into about the borer. What's the management experience? What's uh, who's the borrower? If it's a corporation held by uh, different individuals, then uh, we have to see this. We have to see who owns it. So sometimes it's just a person, uh, but sometimes it's going to be a corporation with many different entities. So about the borrower, um, how long uh, they've owned the property, and then they ask you to provide um, what is called a real estate uh, rental portfolio. So they will look at um, the multi-unit portfolio and figure out um, the, um, the debt service coverage of your entire portfolio. Mm -hmm. so, so it's important to also provide other properties information. It's gonna be uh, required. Um, if it's the company, they'll ask for a, um, a corporate uh, credit bureau. If it's a company that's um, very involved in the operational side, if it's just a holding company, they probably won't require it. Um, net worth statement standard or financial statements when it comes to a corporation okay. um, and proof of assets. So if you have two million in, in the bank, they need to see uh, your name, the date. Uh, so that's the about the borer portion, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a corporation or an individual. And then we go into when it's a, a bit of a more complex organizational chart about okay. the guarantors. Mm -hmm. So um, the guarantors being who will co-sign the loan on a personal level or on a corporation level. So depending on who is involved in there. So really three main ca categories. First one about the property, then about the borrower, then about the guarantors. I think right there and, uh, and the main core of the information will be about the property and who's behind um, yeah. that yeah. The, and as much information about the owner and obviously they tax for they ask for the notice of assessments uh, to, to check revenue and so on. And um, just as a little thing, because when we did a, a refinancing last year, it really showed me how important it is to be properly org uh, organized in all the documentation, because it makes it so much easier when you have everything in, in a Google Drive or a Dropbox or something and you can just have you know all the notice of assessments especially if there's like more than one owner um obviously keeping all, all the the property information up to date because then you can just share the folder and everything is there instead of having to send you know one document at a time and stuff and i know for professionals like you it is actually the nightmare to deal with a client who's like that exactly no it's 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 really going to impact how quickly uh we want to work on your file you know if we have so many headaches to deal with uh mm -hmm. we're not going to be as eager to, to work on the file and 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 if the basic information is not structured then imagine going over 50 leases that half of them are not properly scanned and it's yeah. it's just a nightmare so yes yeah. absolutely and you're touching a good point about um i i want to also add so notice of assessment and t1 so mm -hmm. um if you own your asset personally uh then you will declare your revenues so that's another thing when uh, it's a building that's been optimized well they're going to see it's been bought two years ago and that revenues xyz have been declared in the past few years so maybe prepare um whether it's it's you had problems with tenants so you could even prepare a file and say look i had to go to the régie du logement these are my cases uh so you can understand that i've lost some revenues because of that so if there's a huge um difference between the revenues uh, that were declared and the optimization uh, and stabilization request that's being made, it's going to have to be explained. So yeah. just keep that in mind as well. And in hence where it's so important to work with a professional like yourself who can who can help and guide us as owners to go through that process because we don't know necessarily all the all the ropes and tricks and so on. And um, working with with someone with experience is uh, is absolutely key. So now. Okay, we, we've talked about the documentation that's needed. So then how, how do we actually put together a file? Because to, to, to summarize, like we, 
we prepare the application to the CMHC in order to get the new loan against the full value insured, but we're still going to get a loan from a, a Desjardins or Banque Nationale or Laurentienne or whoever. So, and I, from conversations, I understand that in a lot of people's minds, that's actually a little bit blurry. So can, can you give us a little bit more detail about the, the actual application process and some of the fees involved? Yes, so that's a that's a very good point. So very first step, getting all your documents aligned, I think is, is definitely uh, important. And then we go through a process and obviously every broker is a bit different, um, but we go through a preliminary analysis based on the information, revenues and expenses. We do a preliminary analysis and then we get back to you with roughly, this is what we can do. Here's the contract Do you want to move forward. And we'll go and do a market study and figure out, okay, these would be the best lenders for, and it goes by loan size. It goes by um, different things that will impact the interest rates. So um, depending on that information, uh, we'll do a preliminary analysis if we're comfortable with it, you're okay with it, we'll issue a contract and then we'll get you letter of interest. So we'll test the market and figure out what's the best option for you at those point. And again, every broker is different, but on our end, we work on success fees. So you don't pay us until you get to the notary and you have your money. So depends. So letter of interest, after that, we built the full underwriting. So your initial documentation will probably go back and forth, have some questions once we review the whole file. So we do a proper underwriting and get into the details. Um, so that's the underwriting part, which would be seen as say the third part is first part, getting all the documents, second part, a bit of back and forth, figuring out what we can do, then really building the core of the underwriting and then goes into the CMHC submission. Mm -hmm. But at that point, um, we're not 100% certain of the lender. We have to have a correspondent, uh, but there's no guarantees that you'll end up with the lender that you have submit the file with, especially if you're dealing with a broker. Um, and then once the CMHC certificate of interest uh, of insurance is issued, we go back to the lender and remember right now delays are are are, are huge <laughs> yeah. so today's best lender may not be in six months best lender mm -hmm. so that process is very important um to then get final approval and really have the proper lender in place but usually the process is we finalize the lender portion once we have a CMHC certificate of insurance. Um, but if you're dealing with your bank di directly, uh, then usually they'll end up with the loan ultimately. So it, it really depends how you want to go about it. And then after that, once the CMHC certificate of insurance is issued, you've decided your final lender, then it's just the final approval. So we call it commitment letter with mm -hmm. a lender. So they are committed and that commitment commitment letter serves as instructions to the notary. Okay. So those are the steps. So let's go over them because it's been a lot. So sure. getting all your documents aligned back and forth with your bank or your broker, depending on who you're dealing with, potentially backing it up with letter of interest then full on underwriting of the files back and forth questions before you submit to CMHC. And then once you get CMHC approval, then you get your final commitment from the lender you decided to move forward with. And then you go to the notary. Okay. I just want to clarify one point uh, is that throughout that process, when we work with a broker and let's say I was to come to you and say, Hey, I want to refinance this property. I'm not necessarily attached to my current lender. So does that mean that you would go and you go and shop around with the Banque Nationale, TD and so on and so forth? Like, um, how so do you, how, how do you approach them to get multiple bids to make sure that you get the best deal for your client? Yes. Yeah, so we shop around at the start. And then we shop around once the CMHC certificate of insurance is issued wow. just to make sure that or shopping around six months later is still the most accurate. And sometimes it's a matter of the client wants a line of credit. 
-hmm. Well, then we know we won't go with um, an online bank because they don't offer these kinds of products. So okay. sometimes it really, by the end, then the client realizes, oh, but I might like this. So it's a matter of just being as detailed as possible in terms of who can do what. And sometimes there's a lot of intangibles. Mm -hmm. So um, you may see on paper the best offer you've ever seen in your life, but Potentially, maybe this lender is known in the market to take forever. Uh, I mean, some lenders are, are have different intangibles that only if you deal with a broker who's really active in the market will be able to share those with you. So that best offer or those particular conditions, such as rate forward fixing conditions uh, that certain lenders will offer, um, well, they'll be able to really um, put lights in all of this and open up your eyes in terms of, okay, you really want to go with this lender, but have you thought about this, 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 and that? And as you get to know your client, you, you figure out what's best for them. Absolutely. And, and, and as you said, like there is so much delay um, for this whole process and there is the, the market is changing very, quite fast. So as you said, like the, the, the original best lender might not be four or five months from now and having that flexibility and working with a broker is a real advantage because then you can actually uh, switch and, and, and get the best deal for your, for your, your client. So then uh, in terms of delays, like what from A to start? So let's say I was to approach you and say, hey, I want to refinance literally between obviously depends how on how well organized the client is uh, between that moment. And let's say notarizing. Um, how how long do you see right now on the market? So so right now, given that we're registering this on the 4th of May, 2021. Yeah. So I do have to tell you a story. So that was a couple of years ago. We issued a full underwriting package on the 23rd of December. Ooh. By that night, we had a CMHC certificate of insurance. That what? was a couple of years ago. Whoa. That same day, we got a certificate. And that was unheard of. Okay? Yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> Now, a couple of years later, we submit a file to CMHC and it takes two months before we even hear anything So from an underwriter. So we'll have an initial email that will say, okay, you, you're missing this, 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 and that and pay your underwriting fees. Um, but usually it takes about two months without hearing a thing when it comes to affordable housing options sometimes they're a little bit faster because they're really trying to push that product um but if you're looking for a standard multi-unit types and the bigger i would say the the, the loan size uh the longer it's going to take because five six usually um you don't need a senior underwriter to to underwrite a file like this so uh it, it really depends on the, the, those things but um, two months, is it ever going to change? I'm really hoping. Uh, they have been um, through a process, I think, uh, of change in, in the past couple of months. So let's hope that it's only temporary and uh, that we're going to hopefully get a certificate within a day as we used to, or, or not we used to, but we once uh, had a chance to. So we're looking at about two months right now as we're speaking in June 2021. Yeah. Uh, just to get an underwriter and then it takes some back and forth with the underwriter so that could take a week that could take three weeks depending on uh, if the file needs to go to uh, the appraisal division uh, so it, it could take anywhere once you have your uh, your underwriter assigned between a week to four weeks depending on the the level of complexity um, of the file mm -hmm. and then once that's done you're going back to market to make sure that you're having the best conditions and then you're going through a commitment level process with the lender and some cases very rare but some cases you can even get refused by your lender even though you have a cmhc certificate of insurance but that doesn't mean that it cancels and voids the CMEC certificate. You can mm -hmm. continue to move with another lender. Okay. Um, and then, so that takes, it depends. Some lenders will turn around within a week of getting the CMEC certificate of insurance and some other lenders will take a month. Uh, and then after that, it's closing process and notaries and lawyers at this time are very, very busy. So we're mm -hmm. talking probably another three weeks. Yeah. So overall, we're looking at four months where we're looking at 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's actually a very accurate description that you gave because on the one we did, we started everything end of August and then we notarized beginning of December. So it's smack, smack on. Yeah. There you go. And, 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 you know, you keep kind of pushing and pushing and, and the notary and this and that. And anyways, no, it's, uh, it's difficult. Now, one thing we haven't touched on yet is you mentioned the fees and it's important yes. for people to know. So what kind of fees? And also let's talk a little bit about, you know, that loan is insured. So there's an insurance premium. Yes, correct. So basically the insurance premium uh, will depend on the loan to value. It can go as high as 4.5% of the total loan amount. Um, and basically that is added to the loan amount. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about CMHC fees, that's added to the loan amount. So you amortize it over the course of the loan. Uh, same thing for underwriting fees, which are 150 a door. Yeah. So if you're submitting uh, a six flex, it's gonna be $900. Uh, that's paid up front, but then you add it to the loan. So you get it back at closing. Uh, so those two fees are added to the loan. But the beauty about insurance is you have a 9% tax that you need to pay in Quebec. I'm in Quebec. So I'm mm -hmm. just want to clarify. So you have to pay a 9% um, tax on your premium at closing. So that's another fee related to CMHC. Um, and when I mentioned the 150 a door, uh, that's applicable uh, for any refinance or purchase. But if you're doing new construction, it's 200 a door and the premiums are higher, slightly higher. Okay. Um, if you want a longer amortization, there's also a quarter of a percent that's added for each five years. So if we're looking at um, an 85% loan to value 30 year amortization, we're looking at a premium of 4.75% and not 4.5 because we're, we're taking 30 years amort. Mm -hmm. And then if we would go 35 years amort, it would be a 5% premium. Okay. So a quarter of a per percent for each uh, five years added. So that sums up basically the CMHC fees. Um, add on to that, we're moving to the lender fees. So some lenders don't charge any fees. Some do charge very minimal fees and some will go as high as 0.4% for say very, very complex uh, corporate structures. So okay. um, it really depends. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the norm we usually see is, is anywhere between zero and 0.15. Uh, but for very, very complex structure, they might charge a little bit more. So that's for the fees. And it's when I mean those percentage, it's always in terms of total loan amount. Um, and uh, and so just keep that in mind. We're talking about a percentage of the loan amount. Um, the other things you want to consider um, is the fees in regards to the notary, because yeah. we're not renewing. We're going back to the notary. We're taking out money. Therefore, you need to pay the notary. Some lenders, I think it's becoming more and more common, um, have an insurance consultant. So when I mean insurance consulting, I mean damage insurance. So the property needs to be insured uh, and they usually outsource that and have a consultant look at your insurance, uh, damage insurance policy. That's usually maybe three, 400, depending on, again, the, the size of the, uh, the building. Um, so insurance consulting, not CMT related, but that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. Broker fees, um, it depends on the broker. Some will charge fees, some will get paid by the lender. So it's really, it depends on the broker you're dealing with. Um, but ultimately, you're always the one paying for it. So yeah. I would just maybe ask a bit more questions to say, hey, like, how are you getting paid in this? Um, so, uh, so, so that's that. And usually, I mean, especially for multi-unit, uh, you're, you're not going to see upfront fees. They'll usually charge, uh, at closing. Um, and well, there, there's uh, still the, the per door fee that you have to pay upfront with your application. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean the broker fees. Oh, broker okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But absolutely. Um, and then what else in terms of cost that I can think of? Uh, those are the main things uh, in terms of a refi. Uh, we're not dealing with the purchase. So we're not dealing with uh, welcome tax or anything like that. No. So um, 
Yeah. Th there would be just something I would add because I didn't really see it coming and it's obviously so logical, but I, I should have thought about it is when we redid it, obviously the, um, the insurance policy needs to be changed on the building. And when I went to my insurance broker and said, well, you know, what's your new loan amount? What's the, what did the property appraise at? And so we had created a lot of value and I didn't see it coming, but obviously is that our insurance premium went up by like 50%. And so obviously it's still worth it. It's just that, oh, that's another like, you know, $1,500 of expense a year uh, that I didn't really account for. And obviously the property pays for it and it all makes sense, but I, I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, that's a good point. And, mm -hmm. and more and more, I would say some of the lenders are, 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 are really making sure that some very particular clause are in there. So sometimes, yeah, you, you can have cases like this where your policies will unfortunately go up, but you have to remind yourself, I'm getting a good rate. Yeah, exactly. Take out. Yeah. So it's it worth out. it. It's worth <laughs> it. It's worth it any day. Uh, now, uh, to, to, uh, to two more things. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning that you've really focused on affordable housing. And the, my question to you is, so then, what is the role in, in the CMHC in preparing certain products in terms of financing for affordable housing? So, I'm, you know, let's say I'm a, I'm a developer, I want to build an eight unit. Why would it be interesting for me to even consider doing affordable housing? And what are the obligations? Yes. So for affordable housing and, and, and I, I think for new construction, it's a product that's going to be more and more used by builders. Uh, because you are able to go up to 95% loan to cost wow. when it comes to affordable housing uh, product for new construction. So you can't refinance with affordable housing at 95% loan to cost. It's really you buy the land, build from ground up. This is where you go 95% loan to cost. So it becomes super interesting when there's pressures on the costs um, to start looking at those. And for instance, we're looking at a, um, a project right now that is, is far uh, where the valuation is not necessarily there. Therefore, basing it on the cost as opposed to the valuation is a huge advantage to our client. So not every project makes sense. If you're mm -hmm. doing a high rise core downtown, super luxurious, you're not going to build affordable housing, no. uh, but it's a really fun product. And especially with the pressure on the cost, it also allows you to, um, to figure out what your your future um, your your future loan is going to be, and so with conventional options, you have um, you're going to go seventy five percent loan to cost. But because we're seeing so much pressure on the cost, that seventy five percent is sometimes now sixty five percent. So ultimately, now you have builders that are putting thirty five percent down payment as opposed to the usual. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's different structures. There's A B structures you can get, uh, but I'm talking about just the, the usual construction structure uh, without any A B uh, structure behind it. So. Ultimately, it starts making a lot of sense. Absolutely. And we're already seeing affordable housing projects um, that were used to go in 90, 95% loan to cost that are getting approved at like 80, 86% loan to cost because of that pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so so it's for me, I think it's a wonderful option and 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 it it's a dear need. Um, but there's like in anything, things to look out for. Um, because it also looks at the rental rates. So if your rental rates and the way that it works is you have to be at 90% of the full available rental, total rental income. Therefore, if your building in your area should be generating 100,000 a year, you have to be at 90% of that to be part of the affordable housing project. So, okay. so you have to be generating 90% a year as opposed to that market at 100%, mm -hmm. uh, 100,000. So it's something to consider. And we had other cases where, and obviously I, I'm hoping that these things may evolve over time, but where builders started being building affordable housing project, but because you're always at that 90% rule, you're depreciating over time, 
all your market comparables. So in a market where there's not a lot of comparables and you're the only one building affordable housing or new projects, then it's hard on the comparable side at some point, you have to make a decision to go back to conventional CMHC because you're the one creating all the comparables for affordable yeah. housing and you're at 90% every time. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it, it gets to evolve a little bit, uh, but still, I think it's a wonderful product to be using. Absolutely. And so when, uh, just to clarify, so um, when the rents have to be at 90% of the market value, is there, is it forever? Is it for a certain period of time? Yes. So usually there's a 10 year uh, mark where it follows um, based on statistics, Canada, they have statistics in regards to certain sectors um, of, of inflation. Uh, so they're going to be looking at that for the um, increase in, in rental for, for these affordable units. Um, and, and then the rest, you can do whatever you want because it's, it's market rent. So the first 10 years are crucial when yeah. it comes to affordable housing products and uh, specific rents. Okay. That's good to know for, so for someone who would like to build and get, you know, hearing of 95%, uh, is, is very attractive, but you also have to remember that it comes with certain obligations and, and that 10 year rule is, uh, is rather important. Yeah, and it comes with a lower premium, but it also comes because they're such a high loan to cost, uh, loan to value, uh, sorry, loan to cost. Um, then it also comes with certain things like they will ask for a reserve of repairs uh, and replacement of 2%. So that is yours, but it gets taken away to just be held in trust in case anything happens because they've leveraged so much your construction. Mm -hmm. So it comes with certain things. I think uh, it's a matter of just getting informed and, and figuring out if that product works for you or not. Absolutely. And as you said, it's also very market specific. In some places, it would make sense. In some places, it, it wouldn't. And it's really on a case by case basis. Um, one more one more question. Uh, we're getting towards the end here. Just you've worked on dozens, if not hundreds of files throughout time. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of twofold question. Like, what is it that you've noticed about people who do their financing where it's quick and successful? What do they do specifically? So what do they do specifically to, to, to make it a successful one? Yeah, and, and to be quick and, and to make it work. And so you want to work with them too. Yes. So basically, I think just being organized and mm -hmm. allowing yourself to have the time. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating for anybody to get a call on a Friday at 10 p.m. saying, I need my financing for tomorrow. <laughs> no. It, it just, it doesn't work. So, and mm -hmm. any good negotiation, you have to have the time. And I think it goes back to understanding financing and understanding the actual transaction. And there's four ways you're gonna see a transaction. A transaction that has no issues, then you're gonna go straight to CMHC. But if you have timing issues, if you have a property that's, breaking down or, or you have a lot of pressure from say a vendor to close quick, 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 which we know right now is, is, is very, um, it's, it's a very aggressive market. Mm -hmm. Um, then you might want to look for bridge financing and you mm -hmm. want to maybe want to look for a private alternative option. So, uh, you can't have it all. So I think those that are reasonable, that are pushy when they need to, um, and, and, and are, are probably the, ones that are the most successful so sometimes it's just like do you want a rate or do you want a quick turnaround yeah and and, and at the end of the day there's nothing that i i don't like like I, I i don't like seeing people missing out of opportunities because of an interest rate i think sometimes that if there's a will there's a way mm -hmm. it may not be the interest rate you want for the next 12 months but but you got your financing Exactly. You're going yeah. to refinance and, and don't miss out on this opportunity. Mm -hmm. If it's a really good deal mm -hmm. and you know it and you have the capabilities, don't turn down a good bridge option or a three months private option. Uh, if it's what makes sense because of, of intangibles, like a very, very stressful vendor who's putting a lot of pressure. Uh, so, so I would say, yeah, the most, um, the most organized and, and, and reasonable, and there's no such thing as a good negotiation that's 
in panic and stress mode and and you know so just take the time breathe everything's going to be okay okay <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Um, wow, that was a that was a lot of information. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, before we before we conclude, uh, where can people find out more about you? Yes, so I would say my LinkedIn profile is is something good to follow since I founded Ethe Papillon Financement about a month ago. Um, we don't have a website yet, but it will be coming. Very soon. Uh, the way to reach me so linkedin you can get in touch with me or my phone number 514-566-7908 uh, you'll have all my contact information on linkedin through emails uh, you can reach me there you can find my email or just call me for me it's it's just uh, we're a phone call away uh don't hesitate uh, it'll be my pleasure i mean just the 30 or 45 minutes we spend together is, is definitely there's just so much depth to that product or, yeah. or those products so don't hesitate uh, if you have further questions or, or clarification needed. Absolutely. Well, hey, thank you so much, Stephanie. There is, uh, as you said, there's a lot of information there and we, we could talk about it literally for the next uh, the next two hours. And I find it's a very interesting topic because the, the market being so hot, we all have to be creative. And uh, and I like how you said, like, you know, you got to know when to push and also when to relax and slow down a little bit. And for me, that's one of the one of the good reminders of, uh, of of today's conversation thank you very much you're welcome so thank you very much that wraps up for for this week uh, as usual if you like the content please uh, share subscribe send us some feedback it always helps to get us great guests and until then talk to you next week thank you very much and bye-bye mm -hmm.